on the beer review with moi, the master of puppets, Peter. Jakob Lord of Maltz. Um, <laughs> as you see, we already got the beer poured. We're going to be reviewing because my camera ran out of battery when we were shooting. And for some reason, uh, we only got like two seconds Two seconds of the intro. <laughs> and we didn't realize that, that the camera shut off because we got the sun right in our faces. Uh, we're sitting inside because it's raining still. Um, it's a little bitter, but... Yeah, it's okay. It's a little <laughs> bitter, as you said, yeah. We're doing an IPA from Ohio. I actually have re relatives in Cincinnati in Ohio. Uh, cheers to the Cargills. Um, <laughs> this is the Hop and Frog Triple Hop, uh, or Triple IPA Hop Dam, or Hop Dam Triple IPA. 10% uh, says here, some say bigger is better. At Hop and Frog, Frog, we build a massive hop dam to handle the enormous amount of hops added to this colossal American Triple IPA. The result is an extreme blast of citrus and piney hop character, complemented by layers of rich malt flavor. Behold our new standard for hoppy beers. 10% and very high IBUs, that's what it says on, on the label. Cool label there. Um, I really like Hop and Frog. frog. Uh, we need to review more of their beers. Yeah. What I've had so far has been great. Now, um, I only had one. So. Yeah, you only had the Frosted Frog, yeah. which was awesome. Great. But, um, this is... Uh, a, a triple IPA. I believe this is uh, the ba the base of this is the same as the base of a Mean Man Alessi, which is their double IPA, which was the first ever American double IPA I had, and I remember it being really, really bitter. But I remember liking it a lot. But it, I haven't had it for two and a half years, so I don't remember it. Uh, hopefully, we'll get it again, so I can do a review again, uh, or do a review of it instead of just tasting it. But here it is. The beer already poured because of the shitty. Battery running low. Um, I have a lot of the yeast. So yeah, Jakob got all the yeast almost because he put first. But I do get a lot last. of hop. Yeah, last sorry. I do get <laughs> a lot of the hop haze in my glass. Uh, it's an orange, dark, dark orange cover color head or lace <laughs> of white. There's not much head. A little off white kind of. Yeah, because it's a ten percent beer. Yeah. But let's take out the aroma again. Again. As I said before, I get a ton of citrusy hops, some grapefruit, but also some of the pine and a lot of tea-like qualities, like tea leaves. And there's a lot of uh, uh, tropical fruits, some peachy apricot notes as well. Yeah, and there is somewhat of a sweet multi present in there, but mostly it's just a hop monster. Like, it's like fresh squeezed hop juice, you don't smell anything but hops, and it's... Uh, it's got that really like tea-like hop quality I get in some really hoppy beers. Yeah. Um, it smells awesome. Yeah, let's give it a taste again. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Or let's say we didn't taste it. <laughs> again, I can make this face up again. No. Uh, <laughs> it's really, really intensely bitter. Yeah. I mean, this is tearing your face off bitter IPA. Um, the most bitter IPA I've ever had is the McKellar 1000 IBU light because it's got more less alcohol and all and then it's more bitter and that was like it's that was crazy. too much <laughs> that was too much I think I prefer the regular 1000 IBU was great but the light edition was kind of eh, too bitter uh, this has got somewhat of the same quality with the bitterness but in a slightly more balanced way but it's still very aggressive it's like someone in through saying yeah. in mouth, yeah, really, uh, the bitterness wise. What would you call the body? I'd say medium, mm. with a very dry, um, really dry mouthfeel. Yeah. Um, this is for the level of really extreme big IPAs. I do love big extreme IPAs. The uh, 1000 IBU light was just too bitter. This has got slightly more of a balance, but it's still intensely bitter. You get a lot of pine resin. Uh, pine and resin notes too in there, slightly earthy notes, it's intensely bitter. Mm. If you would like it a little less bitter, then pour in the yeast as well. It's, yeah, it's very the rounding, rounding off the bitterness, it's not as intense and it's not lingering on forever. A little, but it's not as bad as... Not I, as, bad. I, 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 not I, as I, intensely yeah. bitter as mine, because yeah. mine's got all... Uh, no yeast has, at all. It, it has a sharp kind of. Uh, it's got a sharp yeast or a hop, intense hop flavor. But I mean, this is one for extreme hop lovers. There's a little malty presence. Yeah, like, like a sweet malty caramel. caramel yeah. But it's just, it's like you get it when you just sip the beer, you get a slight amount of malt, and then it's just gone like that because the malt, <laughs> the, the hops just wash away everything. Yeah. I mean, 
if you like spicy food, have this with like jambalaya or um, some chili Indian food. Carne. <laughs> yeah, chili con carne, a carne um, or Indian food because this would just cut the, the spicy flavors like this, I think. Because it's the bitterness is really intense. Um, if you don't like intensely bitter beers, I don't think you would like it as, as much. And especially if you're more to West Coast beers, because this is more East Coast with the pine and the resin, uh, slightly earthy notes. Uh, but it's good. I actually really like it. Yeah. Uh, but not the best beer I've had from Hubbing Frog. And rating wise, I'm gonna give it an 87. It's a really good beer, close to a 90, but I would have liked a little less on the bitter side and more of the, like, the hop juicy, grapefruity, piney flavors. I'm letting it an 88. <laughs> it's. <laughs> As you say, balance is drinkable. It's a little bitter, but it's nothing. If bad. you don't like IPAs, my friends, you will hate this for <laughs> sure. Because uh, if you're not a hophead, this is way too bitter for you for sure. Um, but I like it. Yeah. I mean, an 80, 80, 87 is a solid grade. Yeah. It's a really good grade, actually. Um, but as I just said, I would lo have loved to have a slightly more of a uh, hoppy. Flavor that's not just bitterness, but that's a, that's about it. Other than that, they have really achieved what they tried to achieve. Uh, intense triple IPA or a hop dam. So that's it for this beer review, guys. An 87 from me and 88 from Jakob for the Hoppin Frog Hop Dam Triple IPA. Um, let us know what you think of it if you've had it. Maybe you think it's way too bitter and you hate it. Uh, let us know. Maybe you love it and say we're just pussies. We should have given it like an, a 95 or something. <laughs> but let us know. Uh, good beer for sure, definitely worth picking up, especially if you're a hophead. Uh, so yeah, let us know, and as always remember to comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we're gonna say cheers. Cheers. And we're gonna see you in another beer review. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs>